Sharda, are you there? Yes, Sri Devi. Tell okay. me. In few minutes, we'll be starting off. Okay, fine. Shafi sir, Shafi, are you keeping in the speaker mode? Like whoever is speaking, they will be visible. Uh, good morning and welcome to VJIT. Today, I think, is the fourth day of your induction program, uh, and all the students seem to be enjoying the sessions with all the luminaries of the society from various uh, fields, from industry as well as from academia, are coming and giving you a lot of inputs on uh, how to groom yourself, how to be the real professional. And today, we are having with us another speaker who is going to uh, give you a lot of inputs on how to groom yourself to be the real professional. And all these uh, induction programs are being conducted and organized under the able guidance of the HOD of HNS department, Professor M. Rajendra Prasad, sir. And today, let me introduce you to today's speaker. Uh, she is none other, another, uh, none other than uh, Sharada Chalapalli. She is currently working as a program manager at Qualcomm India Private Limited in the technical communications team. She has done her master's in English and business management from University of Hyderabad and also has a degree in journalism. Sharda has started her career as a reporter with the Times and Express group of newspapers where covering the news related to the events around the city was her primary responsibility. Subsequently, she moved to the field of technical writing and worked with companies like Barn, that is now called as Infor, a com uh, Computer Associates, now called as uh, Broadcom, and presently she is working with Qualcomm. Uh, she has over 20 years of experience in different roles as a writer, manager, and now program manager. She is an avid reader and is passionate about learning new things. Added to it, she is a motivational speaker to welcome Sharada Chalapalli. Uh, to VJIT and uh, I hope you are going to have a nice session, enjoyable session with our students uh, who are very, very active and interactive too. Uh, Sharda, can you... Thank you. Thank you so much, Sri Devi. Thanks for That's the lovely awesome. introduction. Okay. And before we go live, I, I just want to tell my students a small anecdote. Once upon a time, uh, you know, it was like 
uh, carrying uh, or if you have to move from one place to another that you have to uh, take a donkey or a horse and put all your luggage on it uh, ask your family members to sit on it and then uh, go all the, uh, that uh, heavy way of uh, going to the different place but now we have cars which are going to take your luggage which is going to take your your family members it's going to carry you and at longer distance with much more comfort and how do you think all this is possible this is possible because of the engineers and you have chosen a beautiful profession who is going to change the society you are going to uh, rule the society with all your innovations and uh, technol technical uh, you know inputs to the society making the life much more simpler and easy to go on with so with this i welcome all the students also to the fourth day of the induction program and sharda over to you the session is all yours now Thank you. Thanks so much, Shri Devi. So I will quickly start sharing. Let me do that. Okay. Good morning, guys. Good morning, everyone who is on the YouTube channel with your chatting and you're saying good morning. A lovely good morning to all of you. So it is... My pleasure to be a part of this forum. I think Shrita, we are saying something and you're on mute. No, nothing. No, from okay. my okay. Okay, cool. So we're good, good to get started, right? Yes, you can go ahead, Sharda. Okay, sure. All right. So good morning, guys. Uh, it's very, uh, I wish that, you know, we were meeting in a better atmosphere when we are like able to kind of see each other and we're able to talk to each other live and stuff, things like that. It's very unfortunate that we are having to do this online, but that we'll try to make the most of it. <clears throat> so what I will say is I'll really encourage all of you to be as communicative as possible. Feel free to kind of like post your questions on the chat. You can put your comments, you have any follow on thing, something to say, please feel free to do it. Let's see how interactive we can make this session over the next one and a half hours. Does that work for you? So somebody is putting an icon, should I understand that to be an yes, and I can go ahead and uh, you guys are going to be participating in the session as much as possible. Is that what it means? Okay, I'm going to take that as a yes and I get started. I'll try to make this as interesting and as informative for all of you as I can. I'll try to keep it like, uh, you know, the concepts I'm going to be talking about, they might seem like very uh, complicated, but I'll try and make it as, inf uh, you know, easy to understand as possible. Okay. Let's get started. Thank you so much for the replies there. I think a few of you are saying yes. So I would really encourage all of you to be like, you know, asking questions and putting your comments wherever something comes up. Okay. All right. So very quickly, this is what is going to be the agenda we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to be trying to spend some time understanding what it means when we say grooming. And we'll also try and see what it means when we say professional. So when we understand what grooming means and what professional means, we'll try to put it all together and see what are the skills that are required to be known as a thorough professional. We'll try and understand why we need them. You know, what are the scenarios when you require these skills and where can you use them, okay? At a high level, this is going to be our agenda. These are going to be the topics that we're going to cover over the next 90 minutes. The key takeaway for you from this session would be at the end of it all, I would expect you to be having a fair understanding of what when people say be professional, it's very simple for somebody to comment like that. You know, you're either being professional, or you're not being professional. But for you to process it and understand what it means to say when you're what it means when somebody says you're being professional or not being professional, that would be your key takeaway from this session. Okay. 
Okay, so I have a little bit of a sore throat. So please excuse me if I'm like clearing my throat in between. But yeah, to kind of go to the next one. I have two images. I have two pictures showing up on my screen. Who do you feel is more likely to be referred to as a doctor? Over to the chat, please. You can post a couple of replies there. We will see the first couple of them. So who do you think will be someone you would refer to as a doctor? The one to the left or the one to the right? Is anyone going to be posting replies on the chat? Can somebody take a shot at it? First one, left one, the girl. All right, thanks so much for, the, for those comments. All right, let's take a look at this for a second. Let's see what is happening here. You decide on a person to the left to be the doctor because she is an uh, apron, she had the stethoscope around her neck. Is that what kind of made you think of her as the doctor? What makes you think that the guy with the curly hair and the chilled out attitude and the, 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 the cool look is not a doctor? You know, nothing says the person is not a doctor. It is quite possible that the person to the right is also a medical practitioner, just wants to look different. You know, he, he had a cool attitude about him. But our, what happens is, now take, take a minute to kind of let this sink in. <clears throat> what happens is, you know, unconsciously in our mind's eye, we have a stereotype which kind of says that, you know, if a person is wearing an apron, person is a doctor. You know, we inevitably end up giving the person some respect. Okay, we think that, okay, this person deserves respect because they're wearing an apron and they must be a doctor. You don't really know whether they are qualified to be a medical practitioner or not. Is that correct? Okay. So let's take a look at one more picture. Who will you hire for security? Yeah, somebody is saying dress sense. Thanks so much for the comment. I think I agree. We'll come to that in a second. Now, please go ahead and start posting your answers. Who will you hire for security? Guy to the left or guy to the right? Any thoughts? Any thoughts on left one or the right one? Again, like our earlier image, it's a stereotype. We just feel that somebody who looks competent is probably the right one for the role. So please make a note of what I am saying here. It is not about physical look. It's not about beauty. It's not about any of the, those things. It's about the competence. It's about how competent you look. That creates an impression for somebody to think that you are capable for a certain job. Okay. Yeah, actually, both of them could be hired for security. You're correct. That's what it is. But unconsciously, we somehow tend to feel that, you know, one person is probably more competent than the other. Who gets hired as a banker? You guys are smart. You're wisening up. Now I can see somebody saying left one, right one. Yes, correct. And somebody saying both. <laughs> both. Both, yeah, right. <clears throat> yeah, both for security. Now, who is for banker? Who is for banker? Left, both, correct. Again, it's a stereotype. It's just that, you know, we tend to feel that somebody who is dressed up in a certain way, a more formal way, is likely to be the one who is a good fit for a profession. That doesn't really say anything about the other one who is not looking to be uh, fitting it into the mold. It's just that that's how we perceive something. Okay. Correct. Both could be hired as a banker. What I'm trying to tell you is your skill, 
the skill you require to be a banker or a doctor or a security guy the skill is something you know you you can be uh, getting a gold medalist in your mbbs exam you could be getting a gold medal in your chartered accountancy to be a banker you could be like that hefty heavy building guy who works out like eight hours a day to be a competent security guy you can be any of those things those are one set of skills fitting in how you present yourself how you are groomed to be for that profession is the second part and the second part is what we're going to focus on because in this session because what happens is like shri devi ma'am in the introduction said early on you guys have already signed up to be engineers your core engineering skill is going to be given to you by your teachers they're going to make you competent enough to be good engineering professionals to step out into the job market what i am trying to focus on today is the later part how do you prepare yourself to be looking competent or how do you carry yourself to be you know showing that aura of competence about you that's going to be the focus of our session today okay let's see what is grooming what do you understand by grooming so if you do a google search a simple google search and say what is grooming grooming definition you know any of those things it's likely to give you some kind of a meaning which says that you know grooming means doing things that make your appearance clean neat for example brushing your hair uh, wearing the right kind of clothes or presenting yourself so is that what we are referring to here is that what we mean when we say grooming in in the context of what we are talking about today the answer is kind of partially yes it's not a fully yes because we are not going to be talking about how you have to dress up or how you need to be like Uh, brushing your hair or any of those personal hygiene or sanitation things we're not going to be focusing on that what we're going to be focusing instead is grooming means to choose and prepare somebody for a particular career or job the kind of stereotypes we saw in those earlier slides for a doctor or security person or or an engineer or a banker we are trying to see what are those stereotypes understand them and see how you can fit in that's the grooming we are going to be talking about that does not really mean you need to be fit in into the mold to kind of like dress up like a doctor or be like you know wearing something like a formal suit to be a banker no that's not again what we're going to be talking about it's a thin line it's basically the competence that you present yourself the competence or the confidence with which you carry yourself that is the grooming we're going to be talking about okay let's take a minute to understand what it is when you say professional what do you understand when you say professional again if you do a quick uh, dictionary search you're likely to say like you know a uh, professional means to do a job that needs a high level of training or education what is that so accountants actors architects authors bakers teachers they're all professionals they display some kind of expertise and efficiency so they study to acquire a certain skill and they master it to be called as professionals okay so at a simple level that's what it means to be a professional but when you kind of drill down further basically being a professional it means that you have a ability to learn you have good interpersonal skills you are adaptable and integrity is are there some of the qualities that you look for in a professional so irrespective of whether you're talking about an accountant or an actor or a baker or a teacher or any other professional the key skills that they bring to the table they are like you know how they can they have the ability to learn how they how good they are with each other how good they are with other people in a social situation so those are some of the skills are you with me up to here are you following what i'm saying uh yes uh, they are there and the uh, chat is speaking about them and you can be <laughs> talking about the uh, interpersonal skills and i can see my students already uh, starting that uh, interpersonal communication asking each other which section they belong to yeah i know great to see the kind of interaction 
So guys, please keep it going. And at the same time, let me know, let us also know what you feel about the session or you want to know more. Interpersonal skills are very important. And adaptability, let's take a minute to spend, you know, talk about that. Do you see what we're doing here, all of us on this forum right now? So you guys, you are all used to a certain classroom kind of atmosphere till like about eight, nine months back. Till February, you had a proper classroom where you used to go to get up in the morning, get ready, take your lunch box, go to a college, attend some classes. You have a teacher coming in teaching you. Then you kind of take your uh, conveyance back home, you know, watch TV. So you had a certain kind of routine. Thanks to COVID, thanks to this pandemic situation we are facing, where are we today? You're all like kind of probably just got up, walked some seven steps to kind of turn on your laptop or your mobile phone, plug in your headphones and you're on the, you're joined the class. Is that what you have done? Majority of them, the answer will be yes, that is what you have done. All of us are working, have moved to a work from home, a work from study from home kind of situation now. Take, for example, your own teachers who are on this classroom right now. Till a few months back, they're used to a different way. They're used to a different way to handle things, the way they used to teach, the way they kind of like interacted with all of you, conducted your exams, conducted this orientation. Everything changed. You know, all of us on this forum right now, we are showing a tremendous amount of adaptability. That is what we are doing right now. We are adapting to a changing situation. We are adapting to the demands that a new situation has put for us to kind of change the way we operate and we're taking it forward from there, right? So that's the key skill that we are all like kind of talking about today. So I'm just trying to put it in the context so that you understand what we mean when we say adaptability. All right. Okay, so now put it all together, put the grooming and the professional together. What does it mean? It fundamentally means you have to understand what is appropriate. The term appropriate is in quotes because that's what I'm trying to stress on today. So if you see that Aristotle's quote I put in there, that basically says personal beauty is a greater recommendation than any letter of reference. So when you say personal beauty, I would take, take a minute for you to kind of ensure, you know, tell you that it is different from, say, physical beauty. Don't get confused between the two. Perish your thoughts about the kind of beauty or idea of beauty that you have. It's not about the height. It's not about how you look. It's not about your complexion. It's not about the color of skin. It's not about, definitely not about the weight. It's none of those. It is personal beauty. Personal beauty as different from physical beauty is the beauty that you can, comes from within you. That's the beauty that you kind of like, that others are able to see when you project it to them. That's the confidence with which you carry yourself. That's the aura you have about yourself. Okay? So I'm spending a little bit of time in trying to explain the difference between a physical beauty and personal beauty is because at your age, it's very likely to get confused between the two things because the concept of personal beauty is something that you're going to acquire now in your professional setting when you are in school it doesn't matter so much you know it's it's all it's a different kind of situation we are in school when we are in school okay are you with me up to here guys on the chat if you can like tell me if you're with yeah, me yeah, or there. they're there Okay. Any yeah. questions? Any questions anyone has? Students from your end? Students from your end, do you have any questions? If you're done saying hi to everyone, if you're done with your good mornings, perhaps you can like tell me if you have any questions. Yes, ma'am, you are there. Do you have any questions? Okay, I don't see questions. I mean, I see everyone kind of like waving and all. Okay, they don't have any questions. Thanks so much for the responses, guys. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate your participation. Keep it going. Okay, all right. So now that we have covered what is grooming and what is professional, and we kind of try to put it together in terms of what 
it means to be groomed to be a professional just kind of understanding the whole concept of when we are saying grooming to be a professional what it means is what we are trying to show here so it basically means the personal beauty is something that is something you have to work on and we will over the next course of the remaining session we'll see how we can do that okay you can be a ceo when i say ceo here what does it mean it means ceo is a chief example for others okay how can you be that so think of this um uh, till the time we have we were in before covid i'm sure you had some instances i'm sure you had quite a few instances where you go for a wedding or you go for a party and you see like you know one person the moment they enter the party or they enter the room everyone's attention is on that one person have you seen that kind of a situation i'm sure you noticed right that you know when someone when there is this one person who walks into the room everyone turns around and kind of notices that one person you've seen that right so why does that happen that happens because that one person is unconsciously trying to draw the attention of everyone towards himself or herself by being just because of the confidence or because of the way they carry themselves that's because they are trying to set an example for others they are the ones everyone looks up to yeah you have seen it right okay so let me maybe see maybe my uh, maybe the students have much more of that attitude to be the center of attraction, uh, attraction. i know i know i'm sure i'm sure some of them have really experienced it when they kind of like had this celebrity feeling when they kind of went somewhere and everyone is trying to ask them 100 questions you know that because like you know they score excellent marks in their uh, in their exam and then mom and dad have already like you know spread the word to everyone oh my child is like this exceptional one has done great job and the moment they kind of go there Uh, everyone knows you know the the topper has entered you know they are the toppers they are the ones who have got like this we did a music performance and the siblings and the family is talking about it and then they go to a function everybody is trying to kind of you know shake their hands be with them take selfies or you know talk to them basically that's what they're trying to do Maybe right. I can add, add on a little here. Uh, on the first day of their uh, day to college, yeah, sure. That day is one uh, one day where they feel that they are uh, uh, definitely attention seekers. They 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 groom themselves uh, to be the future professionals on the first day itself. Right. So I see a couple of comments where somebody is saying that they feel awkward. Actually, I see a couple of them saying it. So I will like take a minute or two to kind of address that before we move on to the video that I'm trying to share. Actually, it get used to it. Get used to that tension. I would say like you know it's very normal to feel awkward if you are. So there are different kind of personalities. Without going into a basic big psychological lesson here, I will say that there are different kind of personalities in terms of somebody is an extrovert or somebody is an introvert. Someone who is tuned to be an extrovert is kind of. a lot more comfortable with attention or a lot more comfortable with talking to people when compared to an introvert who is not so comfortable this does not in any way mean to say something is right or wrong definitely no we we have all kinds of people around us some kind of like take to something a lot more easily than the others so if you feel awkward totally fine it's quite normal to do it but i would say enjoy it that's all i can say yeah okay so we will take a minute here to watch a small video because we're talking about yourself we're talking about how you can be a ceo how you can be the one who is setting an example and how you can be the best you know that's the focus of our conversation right now so this video is aimed to reiterate that message and then we will pick up our conversation after the video so please take a few minutes to watch it What's stopping you? Are you too tired? Didn't get enough sleep? Don't have enough energy? Don't have enough time? Is that what's stopping you right now? Don't have enough money? Is that the thing? 
Or is the thing that's stopping you, you? Excuses sound best to the person that's making them up. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Get off the pity potty. Telling everybody your sad and sob stories, trying to get people to show up to your pity potties and your pity parades. If you ever see me in a Rolls Royce, a six or seven star hotel, living my life to the fullest, don't get jealous of me. Because I work my ass off to get it. Nobody handed me nothing. Wake your ass up. Awaken the beast inside. It's game on. It's go season. It's time for you to take advantage of the access and the resources that you have in your country and your community. You got a problem with your life. You got a problem with your environment. Do something about it. If you want it, go get it. Recognize the excuses are not valid. They're conjured up, they're fabricated, they're lies. And how do you stop the lies? You stop the lies with the truth. That the truth is, you have time. You have the skill, you have the knowledge and the support and the willpower and the discipline to get it done. The fruit of everything good in life begins with a challenge. Everything is a pill that's worthwhile. And this, it's not going to come to you, and it's not going to fall in your lap, and it's not going to be something that, oh my God, I, it just was so simple. It's always going to be difficult. If you want it, you got to go get it. This is your chance. This is your shot. This is your moment. This is your time. This is your place. This is your opportunity. This is my time. This is my moment. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Ain't no such thing as tomorrow. We only got today. It's your dream. If you wanted to have it, get your butt up and make it happen. If you wanted to have it, rise and grind. You still got work to do. Stay on that basketball court. Stay on that football field. It's grind season, homie. Okay, guys, would you like to see that video again or have you watched it thoroughly the first time? Okay, so assuming you've watched it and you have the, got the message from it, let's see if we can carry forward our conversation from where we left off before we got to the video. We were talking about how it is all about you, how it is all about uh, being the best, how it is in you. you. You are the one who can make a difference for yourself. You are the one who can watch it, who can, uh, you know. Okay, somebody is saying they want to watch it again. Is it true? Is it something? Okay, they want it again. Shridhari, are you okay if I play it again? Sure, Sharda, you can. Maybe if, they, uh, if you want to ask some questions on it, uh, it's better they watch that. Yeah, okay. All right, guys, on popular demand, here we go. We will watch it again. Enjoy. What's stopping you? Are you too tired? Didn't get enough sleep? Don't have enough energy? Don't have enough time? Is that what's stopping you right now? Don't have enough money? Is that the thing? Or is the thing that's stopping you, you? Excuses sound best to the person that's making them up. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Get off the pity potty. Telling everybody your sad and sob stories, trying to get people to show up to your pity potties and your pity parades. If you ever see me in a Rolls Royce, a six or seven star hotel, living my life to the fullest. Don't get jealous of me, because I work my ass off to get it. Nobody handed me nothing. Wake your ass up. Awaken the beast inside. It's game on. 
It's go season. It's time for you to take advantage of the access and the resources that you have in your country and your community. You got a problem with your life. You got a problem with your environment. Do something about it. If you want it, go get it. Recognize the excuses are not valid. They're conjured up, they're fabricated, they're lies. And how do you stop the lies? You stop the lies with the truth. But the truth is, you have time. You have the skill, you have the knowledge and the support and the willpower and the discipline to get it done. The fruit of everything good in life begins with a challenge. Everything is a pill that's worthwhile. And this, it's not going to come to you, and it's not going to fall in your lap, and it's not going to be something that, oh my God, I, it just was so simple. It's always going to be difficult. If you want it, you got to go get it. This is your chance. This is your shot. This is your moment. This is your time. This is your place. This is your opportunity. This is my time. This is my moment. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Ain't no such thing as tomorrow. We only got today. It's your dream. If you wanted to have it, reach your butt up and make it happen. If you wanted to have it, rise and grind. You still got work to do. Stay on that basketball court. Stay on that football field. It's grind season, homie. Time's up and we have been talking about it on the chat. Do you recognize one of these guys in the video who acts in the Fast and Furious movies? I know quite a few of, say, of you said that you watch the series. Me too. I'm a big fan of that series. I'm a personal fan of Vin Diesel. How many of you could recognize one of the guys in the video who comes in the movie? I think could we have given some names also. Like... Uh... No, no that's not Arnold. And Arnold. Arnold. Arnold, Arnold. Arnold. Arnold is the wrong answer. Arnold is the wrong answer. You know what? I'll show you. I'll quickly kind of like, you know, go to that and show you so that you can connect it. Can I, can I, how do I do this? Somebody saying, yes, Roman peers. That's correct. Shashank. Shashank got the right answer. And you remember the scene? That's from, I think, Fast and Furious 7. I think they are in, in a hotel in... In, in, in Abu Dhabi, that's where the scene that before they kind of like fly out of the cars. I think a few of them have got the right answer. Roman Pierce is the correct answer. Yes. Thanks, guys. I think that's, that's what I wanted to kind of see. That's the kind of participation I want to see. I, I'm really encouraged with your answers. I'm really encouraged with your participation. Let's move on to the topic. Before you move I on, I would think. also like to add on one point. Of yes, here. please. Uh, here, there's uh, like I'm uh, coming up with a quotation which says, uh, uh, where there is success, there is no excuse. And where there is an ex uh, excuse, you can never have any success. So this video is really speaking about it. And guys there out uh, watching this video, you are all going to be the professional engineer soon and no excuse to that. Yeah, Shri Devi, I agree. And another thing, another key thing that I wanted to reiterate when that video is the you, why for you. It's a small three letter term, but that kind of defines you for what you are. It defines your personality, it defines your attitude, it defines everything about you. So no excuses, guys. You need to be the best version of yourself at any point in time. That's the key thing that we are trying to drive, be it as a professional, be it in your personality, be it uh, in any walk of life. You are special and, and, and be the special personality, be the best version of yourself, okay? Yeah, we, had a, we are having a conversation about whether it was Fast and Furious 6 or 7. I think it is 7 and somebody says 6, but we are digressing. Let's get back to the presentation. I think we can chat later about that. We can probably check it out and come back with an answer to that. Okay, cool. Manage time. 
manage time and work hard. There's a couple of things that I wanted to kind of drive home uh, a little bit, uh, like by talking about them for a while here. So when, when I say no excuses, when the video says no excuses, and you have to kind of like get your backside up and slog and work hard and make things happen for you, and you say manage time, what are we trying to say here? The first one is fundamentally be organized. All that we are trying to say here is it's very important for you to be like watching your, playing your video game, watching some movie, listening to music, chatting with friends, studying, helping your parents. There are a set of things, you know, you can do in your day-to-day -day life. Fitness, you can exercise a little bit, go for a walk. There are a bunch of things that you can do in your 24 hours. When you say banish time, all that you're trying to say here is do all of them. Don't have to compromise on any one of them just because you want to do more of something. Do all of them. Be organized in such a way that you accomplish all of them. That's what we're trying to say when we say manage time. So if that means having a to-do list, get it. If that means preparing some kind of a calendar, a daily schedule kind of a thing, get it. Whatever it means, you can download some kind of an organizer app in your mobile. You can set reminders for yourself in your mobile. You know, I have seen people who have reminders for get up and walk, get up and drink a glass of water. I have seen people who have reminders for that as well. So it's totally fine. What is important is not to dismiss the reminder, but instead do what you have set a reminder for. That's what is important. Okay. All right, the next one, when you're talking about managing time, the next one that's important is to be punctual. So you need to be respecting your own time and you need to be respectable for the other person's time. If somebody says seven o'clock, it is seven o'clock. It doesn't mean 6.45, it doesn't mean 7.15, okay? So be respectable for other person's time, be punctual, be prepared. So if you have to be somewhere by seven o'clock, if that means you have to get up by five, and you need to kind of start on your journey by 5.30, do that. Plan ahead. Plan ahead to make sure that you're not keeping anyone waiting. Okay? Don't ever be late. Don't ever be late. That's the key, especially when you have a kind of professional environment where you might be going for a job interview. That's all the more reason where you cannot afford to be late. Okay? So those are a couple of things where we are saying, we mean when we say manage time. The second one, work hard. What does it mean? Seems like a very generic statement, right? Typically, you hear your parents saying it almost all the time. You're not working hard enough. You're not working enough. You hear them say this? Yeah, so what happens is, you know, work hard. It seems like a very complicated thing to understand. It's very subjective. What do you mean by hard? What do you mean by work hard? It's very very difficult to quantify something like hard work and say like you know you're doing it what i am trying to tell you is when you when you hear the term work hard understand it to mean are you giving your 100 percent if the answer is yes then the answer to work hard is yes i am working hard but if the answer is no then it means you're not working hard so even something as subjective, a concept as work hard, we can quantify it to say, are we giving our 100%? And that's your 100%, not somebody else's 100%. If you're cutting corners, then you know what you're doing. Then you know it is not your 100%. If I am doing a session here, if I put in enough preparation, that's my 100%. I might still not do a good job. It is possible that in spite of your 100 percent preparation, you fail. It is possible that you don't get to achieve the result you are trying to accomplish in spite of your 100 percent effort. Very fine. It happens. But what is the important thing is you worked hard. That's the key. Okay? Somebody says work like a clock. Definitely no. Nobody is expecting anyone to be working like a clock. A clock, what does it do? It just goes round and round and round at its own pace. Second after second becomes minute, becomes hour, day becomes night, and then the next day. That is definitely not the intention we're trying to say here. What we're trying to say is work like a clock with or in an organized manner where you are trying to accomplish 
all that you want in the same 24 hours that you have versus say an Ambani has. You know, Ambani is one of the richest guys in the country right now. He has the same 24 hours, you have the same 24 hours. So working like a clock is not going to get you anywhere. Trust me, take it from me, it will not help. You need to work smart. A clock is not very smart. This clock is very mechanical. <laughs> not, not, no offense against mechanical engineers here. It's just a term I'm using here. Clock is very mechanical. Okay, consistency is the key. That's perfect. Great, great comment there, guys. I really, this is really nice. So work smart, consistency is the key. What you do today, you have to do every day. Uh, what is this? Work like a clock, don't sit like a rock. I agree. Sitting like a rock is not going to get you anywhere. Working like a clock is not going to get you anywhere, but working smart, working in an organized manner and working hard. Those are the three things which are going to get you somewhere. Okay. Okay, moving on to the next one. Are we good? Are we good with the pace? Good morning. Somebody is like kind of logging in now. Okay, let's see. You can, I can be dependable. How can you be dependable? By showing others that people can rely on you. That's the second quality we are looking for. The first quality that we are looking for in terms of grooming to be a professional is being the best, being the best version of yourself at all times by working hard, by managing your time efficiently, and by trying to accomplish all that you want to in life. The second one that we are showing now is to be dependable. What do you mean when you say dependable? It's video time again. And may I request you, we have about four videos. So if you're okay, please pay attention the first time because if you ask me to play the video again and again, Sri Devi ma'am is going to get me out of this room. Okay, so guys, please pay attention. We are going to watch a small video again. idea. Give me your arm. Okay. Now the other one. When I say go, push against my back and we'll walk up the hill. Ready? Go. Ow! You did that on purpose. Ah, no, I didn't. Now we're going to have to work together to get out of this, so follow my lead. Ready? Right foot. Who's right? Your right or, or mine? I don't care. Mine. Well, why yours? Okay, you're right. Ready? Okay, got it. Okay, right, left, right. <laughs> Look, we're moving. Ah! Don't move down. Now stay with me, stay with me. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Now, what, genius? Working on it. Okay, here's the deal. Stretch out your neck and I'll grab the rope. How do I know you won't let me fall after you grab the rope? You're just gonna have to trust me. <laughs> you know, it's a good thing you're not a big fat guy or this would be really difficult. <laughs> Almost done. It's stuck. Take your time, no hurry here. Scorpion! Push off!
Look at me and my bad self. I snatched you right out of the air. Oh, I'm a crumbly canyon wall, and I'm taking you with me. Well, not today, pal. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. You uh -huh. just uh -huh. saved my life. Uh huh? So? I knew it. Knew what? That there is some good in you, after. Okay, we're back. Teamwork. Someone said teamwork on the chat. And that's like, I think one of the answers, one of the concepts that I wanted to kind of dwell upon when I shared that video. What was happening in that video? Let's take a few minutes to kind of just quickly see what was happening there. So there are two characters, they kind of like were fighting with each other. Actually, they're fighting with each other. They didn't realize that the bridge was in a bad shape. They fall off the bridge, they get stuck between two rocks, and then they decide to be trustful each other to say, you do this, I do this, and together we get out. So what started off from a fight in a situation when they were had to face adversity, they kind of like decided to kind of wash each other's back together. They kind of walk their way up in the funny, weird manner. And then just when they're trying to reach the rope, this whole thing happens and they have ants and they kind of like are about to fall. They save each other. Okay. So this trust, that's the correct one. Trusting each other, trusting together. So the couple of concepts that I wanted to kind of bring out when I said that, you know, our, if you remember the, the whole concept we're talking about is how to be dependable. What does it mean when you try to be, when you say you're dependable? It's not about strength, it's not about weakness. So if you see the video towards the end, the character which is supposed to be the puny one, the tiny skinny character actually saves the much bigger character, correct? So it's not about, it's not about strength. It's not about weakness. It's about reliability. It's about trust and it's about competence. So let's take a few minutes to understand these words. You know, they might seem like very big words, but technically, if you know what they are, they're not like very difficult to kind of comprehend. What do you mean when you say reliable? When you say reliable, it basically means that, you know, from start to finish, you are taking responsibility for your actions. So if your mom, take for example, your mom tells you that go to a market and get some vegetables, you're taking the responsibility to go to kind of like pick up what she wants in a timely manner, not like you go to the market and from there you go up to a friend's house. No you know that you have to come back at a certain time because your mom needs the vegetables. So from start to finish, you are kind of being reliable. You are completing your task efficiently in a timely manner. That's what it means when you say reliable. Okay. So in the chat, I see a few messages which say that, you know, it's very important to have a good partner. It's important to be, uh, it's the important about teamwork. We will come to that in a bit. I really like the answers. I really how, like how you have grasped the message. But what we are trying to do here is spend a little bit of time to understand the concept a little more so that when you say something generic like teamwork, what is what is going into it? That's what we're trying to understand here. When two or three people come together to accomplish a certain task and they do it well at a high level, it's very easy to say, wow, wonderful teamwork between the three of you. But what is happening below the surface? What we are trying to do now is scratch the surface to see what is happening. It's basically good teamwork because there are two or three or more people who are trying to be extremely reliable. They trust each other and they are all competent. That's what makes it a great team. Which is, these are the qualities which we are trying to understand here. Okay, so while I totally understand the answer and all that I'm trying to tell you is dig deeper to understand the qualities, the qualities which make for a good team. And these are the qualities which you bring to the table. Again, if you see the focus is on you, there can be any number of people in the team, but you need to be reliable, you need to be trustworthy and you need to be competent. Okay. Yeah. All right. Trustworthiness. What does it mean? 
it means that you know you are untrusted if somebody is comes to you and says think for example one of your friends sends you a chat and says like you know keep it only to yourself don't tell anyone but i like so and so i like xyz they are trusting you with their innermost feelings they are trusting you with some secret what do you do it is your responsibility to keep it secure with yourself so if you manage to keep somebody secret safe with you that would make you a trustworthy person okay is it something which you are understanding in a very simple manner it's a very common situation all of you are facing or faced with on a day to day basis there are times when your friends your cousin your peers or people at home they come and tell you don't tell anyone when they say that respecting their privacy respecting their wish to keep it secret is what makes you trustworthy okay coming to the third one competent what makes you competent okay some uh, how many of you in this group right now play a musical instrument i can just look for one or two answers yeah you play some of them are saying yes so i am assuming they play a musical instrument so you must have gone to some classes they have got trained and you know how to play a musical instrument what happens when that happens what do you say when you do that when you give a performance they say it's a competent performance so basically you are learning to do something you do it well you are competent it's the same thing when it comes to your professional uh, learning now you signed up to be an engineer you joined an institute over the period of next 4 years you are going to acquire the skill to be competent in your particular field no shortcuts yeah somebody says drum somebody says guitar so guys think of the situation the guitar guy is playing in isolation the drum guy is playing in isolation put them together what comes out they play together it's a symphony it's it's music to the ears they create something amazing together you know so there are two competent guys somebody who is competent with the guitar somebody who is extremely competent with drums they come together they create something unexceptional which is something amazing for all of us to listen to right that's what is meant by competence competence is being at the top of your field whatever you decide to do so reliability trustworthiness and competence if you think bring these three qualities to the table and you are put in a team together you can complement your other team members and that comes across with amazing success and everyone looks at it as like wow this is a great team you understand this another quick example before we move on to the next one is you think of your cricket team there are 11 people in the team each one in the te- in the team is a reliable trustworthy and competent person in their own space nobody is trying to eat into other person's space there but together 11 people win a world cup for the country that's how it happens so when you are talking about you focus on yourself and everything else will kind of fall in place okay next concept yeah melodious music thanks for the answer guys when you put drums and guitar together you get something very melodious that's correct okay next concept so we covered how you can be the best we covered how you can be dependable now the third one that we are going to is how you can be respectful for us by honoring others okay so a small video again i think you got the drill by now i introduce a concept and i show you a video right okay watch it please Okay. <laughs> 
done with the video i think like i was saying in the chat it just coincidence guys we seem to be big on bridges today i think i just coincidence that i picked up two videos which show bridges and collapsing bridges and stuff like that and people characters on the bridges yeah okay so to get back to the topic without digressing too much about the video and its content what were we trying to see there we had two characters who were trying to kind of like fight their way across the same small bridge and they show a smaller character aside the smaller character gets the way back and eventually what happens is by mutually respecting each other they manage to cross a bridge very safely that's what we are trying to show in that video correct yeah respect respect each other respect everyone respect others so the concept i'm trying to talk about is being respectable treat other people well and consider their feelings when you say respectable what does it mean show respect doesn't just mean folding your hands if you meet somebody and say namaste uncle namaste auntie that is one part of it that's a gesture that's a very good gesture but that's really you probably won't mean it but when you say being respectable when you say you have to respect somebody it means a lot more than just greeting someone okay uh, what does that mean that additional stuff when we say being respectable it means that you have to treat other people well and consider their feelings what am i trying to say here is actually it seems like a very simple concept a small a few set of words there but what i'm trying to fundamentally tell you is each one is different each one around you comes with their own unique qualities we have to be accepting each other and treating them well we should not be talking in them about them behind their back we should not be passing any disrespectful comments which might hurt their feelings we should not be doing anything we need to be a lot more embracing of the difference that's what we mean when we say treat other people well irrespective of their skin color height weight all differences final economic differences it could be any cat set of differences that they come up with we need to be accepting and embracing them that's what we mean when we say treat other people well okay this is especially true when you're working in a global organization then you have to kind of like talk to people with different accent you have to talk to people with different background different cultures so you need to be very conscious of what you are doing so it's it's a very take a very small example if you uh have if you show something like you know you want to gift somebody to a chinese you pick up something in red that why do you do that because it's their color they that's the color they relate to you know so that's a small thing but you need to be understanding of other people's culture and treat them well especially too when you are trying to go or work your way towards a global organization in about 4 years from now so be very conscious of this okay next one accepting no for an answer what does this mean does this mean something like you ask your father for a new bike and guy says no do are you supposed to accept it is that what i'm trying to imply here maybe yes when when you say accept no for an answer it fundamentally means that you are trying to dig deep to understand why something is not going your way if you are trying to get something and somebody says no it's not possible spend that little bit of time to understand why that is not happening maybe there is some financial difficulty maybe there is like you know not a good time to ask maybe somebody is not well that they cannot really think about your demand right now there could be 100 reasons but trying to be sensitive enough to understand why somebody is saying no that means you are showing respect to the other person okay third one empathize with other people's feelings what does this mean 
when you say empathize with other people's feelings it basically means don't try to hurt someone either knowingly or unknowingly be conscious of other people's emotions it is possible that a flippant comment you pass to your best friend about some third person who is passing that way and say like look what kind of clothes she is wearing or what kind of jacket guy is wearing it could be a very small comment which you are probably making in a very small group that you trust you trust the other person to be keeping it a secret but inevitably it kind of goes out think for a minute how is the person going to feel if they get to know that this is the kind of comment you are passing about them you know that's not fair right so be a bit more understanding empathize with the other person feeling put yourself in the other person's shoes think for 2 minutes if i am in that situation how would i feel it's so what i'm trying to fundamentally say is so far in the earlier concepts i've been talking about you as in why were you 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 be the best you be the person who is dependable here i'm changing it a little bit i'm saying it's not so much only about you you also have to think about the other person you need to be conscious of how, how others are feeling you need to be conscious of what others are saying you need to be conscious of what are the rules in which i need to operate you know there are rules there are for a reason there are certain rules if i have to make eye contact how do i make an eye contact should i be looking at their eyes should i be looking somewhere else so imagine how bad or awkward it would be if somebody is talking to you and you are looking at your mobile screen you know that's not a right etiquette you know it's not correct it's not good behavior so there is a certain rule that if somebody is talking to you you need to be looking at them and listening to them and responding to what they are saying so there are certain rules with which we operate in a society so after the two concepts i have shared earlier here i am trying to tell you that it is so much about you in the context of other people around you that is where the concept of respectfulness comes in okay does it sound too complicated or are you able to relate to this would anyone take the time to respond on the chat guys are you finding this concept relatable are you able to understand when i say what you mean when you say i say you have to be respectable are you able to follow this because it's very important that the team that we were talking about the team work that we were talking about all the while it like while you are trustworthy while you are reliable while you are the competent one it also means that you have to be respectable to the other people in the team i see some answers yes ma'am thanks so much so if you are able to understand how you fit into the team that is when the team will be successful and you for you to succeed you need to be conscious of those other people other team members also okay moving on i can be moral by doing the right thing so you know the drift i introduce a concept the next slide will have a video but before i go there i am just want to kind of ask you a quick question because i see some of the of you are responding very well on chat that is kind of tempting me to kind of put a question before i go to the video what do you understand when you say ethical behavior what do you understand when you say this is ethical can someone answer that what do you say when you say moral or ethical behavior you know you all had moral science in school i'm sure you you studied moral science so can you kind of like take a word or two from that and say yes ma'am so what what do you understand you understand what it means to be moral what do you mean to be understand to be ethical right let me sum it up for you and see if that makes sense doing the right thing when no one is watching that is ethical behavior do you agree with me when i say that being doing the right thing even when no one is watching that's what is moral or ethical behavior okay okay i have a few words here when i say ethics see what you have here see what there are a lot of terms on the slide right now you see a lot of big big words responsibility conscience choice honor right honesty while it's like you know uh, it's considering the time constraint that we have here and considering the scope of our present uh, conversation which is about grooming to be professionals i won't spend so much of time on all these concepts that you have here but i can pick up one or two terms and dwell a little bit on them 
okay so when you say ethics and you put choice there what does it mean any situation any situation you are faced with you have a choice you have a choice between doing the right thing and the wrong thing and it's not about your version of right or wrong thing it's it's not about i feel i'm justified so i'm doing it's about the concept of right or wrong in terms of how it is acceptable in general take for example a very small example your mom comes and tells you i am going out for 2 hours while i am away study your subject don't play a game this is what your mom tells you study while i am away don't play a game the moment she is out of the door and you lock it from inside the first thing you do is probably switch on the game is that ethical yes or no is that ethical is that behavior ethical so you have a choice you can choose between studying or playing a game your mom actually told you to kind of study and not play a game but you choose it's your choice to play a game instead is that ethical behavior answer is no correct shashank gave the right answer it's not the right thing to do that's not ethical it's not about so much about right or wrong in terms of like i want to study this is my time this is my life i wish whatever i wish i can do very easy to say all those things but are they right no they are not right end of the day it's time for you to study your mom said you study you promised her you would study so you have to choose the right option got it no but we do it very honest very answer very honest answer there i know all of us do it not just you sreeda sreeman but all of us do it given a choice it's very easy for us to pick up what is convenient for us but when you say ethical it means having the courage having the conviction to pick up pick an option that is probably not an easy one for us to do yeah okay another word one other word you know in the interest of time i'll just pick up like one other word conscience i'll i'll not like dwell into all these words but choice and conscience are the ones i wanted to talk about if you do something that pricks your conscience don't do it if if you have to understand what is ethical behavior is it right or wrong if at all you are faced with a situation where you are not able to decide is it right am i doing the right thing go with your gut feeling if something if guilty conscience pricks your mind trust me don't do it that's never the right answer okay i'm trying to share the term conscience here only because that will help you to choose that's something which is going to make it easy for you to decide that's going to help your judgment in terms of trying to be ethical okay any questions okay i don't see any questions so i think as i can move on to the next one uh, how can i can be optimistic by showing a positive attitude it's very much the last one you can be the best you can be dependable you can be respectable you can be ethical and one of the things other things you can be is to bring a positive attitude go back to the video we were seeing when those two characters were i think somebody said ninja hatori that character when they were falling off the bridge and they had all this crocodile swarming below them trying to eat them up you know what happens in that situation what was happening there they didn't give up instead they decided to become friends and they decided to work their way upwards uphill to get out of the situation they were in so what they were demonstrating there is a certain positive attitude that is very important because adversity is a common thing adversities are likely to be coming your way at any point in time things are not likely to go your way all the time there are times when somebody says no to you what is important is for you to be understanding and staying positive okay a small video again i hope uh, you will enjoy this uh, i don't think we'll have the time to play it again so i would request you to really pay attention the first time when it's getting played okay all right watch the video please oh what happened okay i i'm sorry i hope it works
Okay, you're probably thinking, why did I put a Huggies advertisement over there? But I think you guys enjoyed the video, right? <laughs> Thanks for those responses again. What was I trying to show you with that video? I think fundamentally what I was trying to show you is how to be positive. So if you see the baby, there are a lot of things going wrong for the baby, right? You know, uh, when you're trying to drive, the keys fall down near the house and the boss fires the baby. Uh, you see a boss baby firing the other one. So nothing, not many things are going the baby's way. But fundamentally, what they're trying to show is like, you know, you have to be positive. Okay. So there are quite a few situations in life when things don't go your way. In fact, they're quite, a, they're likely to be a many more as you grow up. Trust me, when you are in school and all, you probably won't see so many negatives. But as you grow up, and I'm sure you hear your elders saying it, right? You don't know what it is. You don't know how it is. Actually, maybe it is true. We don't know how it is. Things are not likely to go your way. But what is important is for us to be positive at all times, to be accepting. And there are a few things that will help you stay positive, which I'm trying to put on the slide right now. One is appreciate what you have. How can you do that? What you can do is take a book that you have next to you right now, take a couple of minutes and just try to see if you can write down five things that you are grateful for right now. Count your blessings. What are you grateful for right now? If I have to take a shot at it, because I cannot talk to you in real time, if it were a classroom, I would have asked you to write it and we would have had a conversation about you reading it out. Considering that's not the situation we are in, let me take a shot at it. You have a laptop or a mobile. You have mobile data that you have right now that is helping you to attend this class. You are a student in a good reputed institute which is going to prepare you for the future. So these are all the positives. You have a supportive set of parents at home. We want to encourage your education and you have a family which is able to finance or send you to this college. Yes or no? Five things straight up. I'm able to tell you, which I'm sure all of you will agree with, that we can appreciate right now for what we have. We have a shelter, we have good food. I'm sure your mom woke you up, gave you good food before the class started today. And you know, those are all things that are, we need to appreciate and we need to be grateful for. Yeah? Okay, so appreciate what you have. I know, like I said, we are not able to talk in real time, but I think you will agree with some of the things I mentioned that you can appreciate. And what I'm trying to tell you is think in that direction, think further and see what else you have. And all the more reason to think and uh, appreciate what you have and things are not going your way. Just supposing somebody was likely to say, look, you know, I wanted to be a doctor, but I ended up being an engineer. I would say totally fine. It's okay if you're not a doctor. Be grateful that you are becoming an engineer, you know? That brings up to the second one, be grateful. You know, you need to be grateful. You need to be able to express it. You know what? I'll give you a small task, which you can do after the session at home. Trust me, you, and today is, you know, Thanksgiving day in US. So all the more reason why, you know, however much you are anti Western culture, whatever, it's something good we can take from a different culture. Today is the day when folks in US are very thankful. So what do they do? They call everyone over and they kind of tell them what they are thankful for. So if we have to take it forward, I would say, uh, take some post-it notes or take a piece of paper, whatever you have with you, write out, write out some thank you notes for your friends or family members, send it to them. Tell them that, you know, thanks for being a part of my life. Thanks for being, doing this for me. Be grateful, express your gratitude. You know, can you do that small exercise today? Obviously nobody checking, so be ethical, your choice. You get to choose. You get to choose whether you want to say thank you or not. Make a right decision. And I trust all of you to be able to make a right decision here when I say this. Okay. Now, last but not the least, you can be confident. Okay. So I see a lot of them, a lot of you saying okay and oh, you like like the session. Thanks so much for the compliment, guys. You made my day. Seriously, you are appreciating and you are like pressing your thanks for the session. I really appreciate it. Okay, to get back, I can be confident. You can be confident by behaving in a calm and sure manner. 
Okay, I have, I don't have much of a slide here, but I think if this slide is more of a summary of all that we covered, you remember the first time when I said like, you know, when you enter a room, there is a certain confidence, there's an aura about you. So all that I was trying to bring in over the last few concepts is like, you know, by doing some set of things in a certain manner, you can project that aura about yourself. You don't need to be some expert. And I know a few of you said it's very embarrassing. I understand. Totally fine. But that shouldn't stop you from building that. What I will say is fair enough if you don't like it. You don't have to like everything that happens around you. But at the same time, that shouldn't stop you from being the confident personality. That shouldn't stop you from achieving what you're capable of. That shouldn't stop you from being that one person everybody likes to reach out to, you know, in a, in a group. Or you shouldn't, that shouldn't stop you from being that one person everyone says is the best. Be confident. You can be confident of being, a, of your personality. Be always smiling, be cheerful, be happy, be grateful, be confident. Okay. Now, a little bit about why is it important? So we have had this extensive session for over like, I think what, 60, 60, uh, I think 60 minutes, well over 60 minutes, we have been talking about a lot of things here. Why is it important? Because it all comes down to the three letter word I started at the beginning, why were you? It's very important to be able to make a first impression. That is the best impression. You know, put your best foot forward at all times. What happens when you're punctual for a meeting? It's a very small thing. You know, you're respecting somebody's time. You know, you're doing it because you value the others. But what happens? That impression which it creates by being the punctual, but the punctuality, well-dressed individual brings is a different from, you know, a shabbily dressed person who is like late, who is not prepared. So that first impression is very important, which is why we are spending so much of time on grooming. Okay. It helps you to build a trusting relationship. You remember that video when they're falling down from the cliff, they're fighting, but end of the day, they know they can trust the other person. And when you exhibit certain qualities, that helps your team to be, have the trust in you. It presents a picture of you being organized. So it's like, you know, if you are able to manage your time efficiently, that gives a very good impression. And people think, okay, this person is dependable because the person is organized. They know what to do. Okay. Impacts how you present yourself and impacts how others perceive you both ways. So it, it helps grooming helps in either of these situations. That is how it works. Okay. When are these skills required? When is it that you need to be groomed? When is it that you need to be dependable? When is it that you need to be confident? A very simple answer in all walks of life. There is no one time when you need it and one time you don't need it. Even if you are taking a nap, trust me, having a plan for when you want to take a nap and what you want to do after your get up, that itself is very important. That helps you to be organized that helps you to accomplish a lot of things in life okay that helps you to take a right decision i think i'll take a minute here to kind of tell you a small story you guys know mark zuckerberg right the guy who is on where we are live right now facebook facebook is uh, the the facebook guy he wears, if you see him, if you see his videos or if you see him in, in the media, he wears a similar kind of trousers and shirt every single day. Do you know why he does that? So somebody asked him, you know, Mr. Jukaba, why do you kind of wear the same kind of clothes every day? Don't you, you can afford a lot of things. You are one of the richest guys in the world. Why do you have this kind of, uh, this kind of lack dashical attitude to your clothing? So, you know what he said? He said, I do this because I don't want to spend time deciding what I want to wear. So he wanted to save the time. He wanted to save the time. He didn't want to waste any time trying to decide what he wants to wear. So he just picks up the same kind of clothes that he wants to wear every day. And he spends that time or utilizes that time on something more productive. So, you know, that is how helpful it is to be organized. That is how much you need the skill to be organized or how you want to manage your time. So there is no one place where you can say, I need or don't need a certain skill. Make this a part of your life. Make being the best a part of your narrative. 
make a part of your story a part of your life story okay how can you get these skills that's very important because we watch some video you have the whatsapp forwards you have statuses people put up with motivational quote are they helpful maybe i don't know i don't have time for those honestly but there are certain ways in which you can get the skill first one you need to be open to feedback what does it mean okay so uh, there was this tennis player who was once i think the tennis player was getting old you guys know tennis right you watch i'm sure so there was this tennis player who was getting old i think slightly on the other side of 40 and some reporter asked her like ma'am you're growing old how do you want to play how do you how do you still play how do you still hit the balls okay so the lady uh, this is a, it's a it's a female player that i'm referring to the lady immediately answers the ball doesn't know my age it doesn't matter to the ball how old i am it's about me whether i am able to hit it or not so when you say open to feedback fundamentally what it means is you win your success or failure depends on how you tune your thinking your thought process your how your brain works be receptive to feedback if somebody is telling you this is not right do it some other way listen to it they telling you for a reason listen to it adapt change yourself and that is going to set you on a path for success okay step outside your comfort zone so considering the pandemic situation that we have here this is all the more important because a lot of our traditional jobs the traditional way of working traditional society everything is going through a change right now so be comfortable enough to step out of your comfort zone and try something new which is pretty much what you're trying doing right now you're stepping out of your comfortable classroom kind of an uh, a situation to kind to do online learning so all that i'm saying is be open to it always step out of your comfort zone get ready to learn you be open to learning something new adapt to change observe yourself that last one is very important it might seem very small so what i would say is a lot of the skills that we are talking about right now they can come to you by just observing others think for example you uh, those of you who stay in a society an apartment or or a, or a society kind of a place and somebody is trying to organize say a new year party you typically see right one person takes a lead one person takes a lead to kind of put the whole program together they kind of take to see like you know who will do the catering what will be the decoration what kind of performance will happen where will everyone sit you know things like that and what will be the time where are we going to organize there will be one person who is going to try to lead it's just you don't have to like really look at mark zuckerberg or an ambani what i'm trying to say is there are leaders all around you if you have to come within your house take a look at your mother your mother is probably the one the best example for somebody who is multitasking and taking a lead in terms of running the household you know right from cooking cleaning handling the maid handling children handling finances handling her own job what to cook when to cook getting stuff ready handling guests there are a lot of things your mom is also doing just as somebody outside your house in a society is doing go further down there could be a, some kind of a leadership Uh, that is exhibited by your teachers who are organizing your fest or events so what i mean to say is a lot of the skills that we are talking about you don't have to necessarily uh, spend time on acquiring them by just observing others in your day to day life a lot of them you can get them for yourself see what are those traits that others are exhibiting that you can work on understand your own strengths work on your weaknesses observe others learn and you're good to go okay so that that we come to an end of the session thank you so much thanks for the participation my mail id is there mobile number is there for your reference in case anybody would like to kind of chat further be the session or you have any follow on questions we can, i'll be very happy to kind of interact with you Oh, thank you so much guys uh, yeah thank you so much sharda that was really wonderful uh, yeah i think somebody had a question sri devi yes yes uh, sahil the water. obeyed he has yeah. a question as uh, how can i improve my positive attitude how can you improve your positive attitude 
so when you say improve fundamentally you mean to say accept that you have a positive attitude right the concept of improving comes only after you already possess it and you want to work on top of it right so at some level you're positive you want to improve on it i would say uh practice those two three small things i told you they are very small uh count your blessings be grateful for what you have and appreciate what you have in life and that will make you a positive person because the moment something you going to say positive it's basically a very small thing any adversity any wrong situation you are in if you can just say okay it's all fine i still have all this going for me there in at any point in time 10 things could be going wrong but there could be one thing that is going right count that one thing this is going fine i'm very happy now let me face it okay that will help your positivity i hope i answered your question yes i think yeah uh, i think i can if if i have i think two three more minutes i'll find a clean narrate something uh, shri devi is it okay yeah yeah it's okay so uh, shada go ahead okay so guys very quickly i will share one small uh, experience with you um, it's kind of related to all that we're talking about today about uh, being you the you concept the concept of understanding that you are special you are different being confident about yourself in terms of what you are i would like to share a share a small life lesson so when i was about your age i was to, i used to live in a society where i helped organize a fancy dress competition uh in terms of like planning how i mentioned i think very briefly in, in another context just now i kind of like got all the kids together we went to all the parents collected some money we bought some snacks we got some gifts for second third we identified who will be the judges got some different chairs for the judges different chairs for the audience and then we got some welcome drinks a lot of planning was done a lot of organizing was done and and at the end of it all i think everybody liked it so they said do it again so we ended up doing it for a couple of years before i outgrew it and i said okay no i'm not doing it anymore i'm done what i'm trying to tell you is what i was doing back in the day when i was about your age you know 16 15 16 kind of an age to what i'm doing today with my 20 21 years of experience today i am a program manager in qualcom doing something very similar all that i'm doing is planning and organizing to ensure my product release goes on time all the documents goes on time talking to different people understanding how you want to talk to to get the work done so you know not much of a change so what i'm trying to what am i trying to accomplish by sharing this life story all that i'm trying to tell you is no learning goes waste no key skill that you acquire goes waste it all comes in handy at some point in time so be open to learning be open to acquiring those skills be open to improving yourself and becoming a confident personality who can chase all your dreams down the line all the best thanks shri devi i think that's uh, sharda the there's one more uh, one more okay. question from the students uh, okay. it is uh, hamdam uh, hamda hamdan okay. sorry uh, he is asking ma'am actually i have an issue with myself that i care for others more than i do for myself actually i want to come out of this so how can you help him out okay you care for others more than you care for yourself And look the in the mirror question. i would yeah. say start with seeing yourself in the mirror if you see spend 2 minutes looking at the mirror you see an amazing person there who is unique who is special and who is in this world for a purpose they have you have your own life and you have only one lifetime you know understanding that you know you have only one lifetime you if you spend living it for others who is going to live your life for you answer that question for yourself when you see in the mirror so i have my day today this is my day what am i going to accomplish today you either spend on yourself or you spend on others you can do both but fundamentally answering the question to yourself that okay i am special i am different i am unique i am here for a purpose convince yourself about that answer the question in terms of what you want to accomplish and you will be able to prioritize that will help you prioritize others versus yourself you can still make time for others but fundamentally you also need to make time for yourself and this thought process this conviction that you bring to yourself will help you handle it better 
Okay, I think I cannot see any more questions. That was really wonderful, Sharda. Right. I, I think my students also enjoyed the session uh, very much. Here, Syed Obeid is again asking you a question. How, How can, can I improve? Improve, improve yeah. what, man? I mean, if you can elaborate on what you want to improve, I'll be able to kind of answer that question. Because improve as a generic concept, it's very difficult to answer. Thank you so much for the feedback. It was a joyful session. Overcome procrastination. Okay, you want to improve or you want to overcome procrastination. So you mean to say you have this habit of saying everything for tomorrow and you don't do today. Is that correct? I'm guessing that's correct. You know that only way to improve that uh, procrastination is go back and see the video I shared. It's about how you can make a difference. You need to be able to get yourself up and pull yourself up to accomplish what you want to do. Always have more, stay motivated. You have a dream. If you want to be, I have a son, I have a 19 year old who wants to become like Lewis Hamilton. He wants to be an F1 driver. So I tell him something very simple. For you to become an F1 driver, you need to get up from the bed and start working out, improve on your fitness. You know, you need to have amazing fitness to be an F1 driver. Driving, you can learn. Somebody can teach you. But your own fitness, that is in your hands. Deciding what you want to add, eat, your choice. You need to be honest with yourself. So how can you overcome procrastination? Have a goal, have a goal and work towards it. Have a dream and work towards it. And that will help you to stop saying, I will do tomorrow because you know if the time runs out today, you will not be able to do it. Okay? Uh, I think the students like this session really. Yeah, really I'm, I'm really just... appreciating the feedback, guys. You guys <laughs> made my day. Thank you so much for the feedback. I am honestly humbled with this kind of, uh, with these kind words. Thank you so uh, yes. much. And our students are definitely going to be the CEO, a chief example. Oh yeah, them. nothing is going to stop them except themselves. They may, can be their own worst enemies. Let Don't become that. Okay. So thank you so much, Sharda, for that wonderful Thanks, Sri Devi. Thanks for the opportunity. And, uh, and guys, thanks for the interactive session. I really appreciate it. And uh, I thank you for uh, giving such a wonderful session on how they can be dependable, how they can be respectful, how uh, they can be a moral, uh, uh, be optimistic, and you know, be the real professional, confident professional they have to be. Thank you so much uh, for this uh, session, for your time you have spent with our students and answering their uh, queries so effectively and efficiently touching their hearts. Uh, and also for that beautiful videos that you have uh, showed to our students, which I think uh, touched the chord where they were able to relate themselves very much. Thank you, thank you so much. And guys, uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. And on this uh, special occasion of the Thanksgiving, let me thank you all. Thank you all for being our students today. Thank you, Sharda, on this Thanksgiving day. And we'll call it a day today. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.